I'm Jane Lo here on site at Marina Bay Sands, uh, the downtown core area of Singapore, and uh, at the Token 2049 event, which is the flagship event of this uh, Asia Crypto Week. And I'm joined here today, very privileged to have Lu Yi here from KuCoin Labs. Yes. Right. Uh, who is going to talk to us and share some of her insights and also KuCoin's insights into a deep dive into women in Web3. Thank you also for inviting me. Before we dive into the study, uh, KuCoin's uh, study on women in Web3, perhaps you can explain to us more about what is Web3 because mm -hmm. many people have different uh, understanding of what it means mm -hmm. and also KuCoin's uh, role in this Web3 mm -hmm. world. I see. Um, so I think before um, understanding Web3, because there are a lot of concepts around blockchain, crypto, Web3, people are thinking this is about the same thing, but it's not. So blockchain basically is a technology. Crypto is about all the financial games around uh, this, uh, you know, speculations, tokens, etc. And Web3 is really about what are the products that users can actually use later on with, uh, with this uh, technology building around uh, the blockchain itself. Mm -hmm. So it's about um, uh, adopting blockchain for applications like in GameFi, for example. Yeah, is, exactly, is, is, exactly. It could be GameFi, it could be DeFi, it could be Metaverse later on. Uh, it could be a web page uh, mm -hmm. or a um, domain name as we see uh, more and more nowadays. Mm -hmm. And KuCoin actually uh, now, as a part of the exploration to Web3, is having KuCoin Labs and KuCoin Ventures as the uh, um, joint investment uh, arms Mm -hmm. of, uh, of the whole corporation uh, to invest and incubate uh, Web3 projects. Right, uh, very exciting. I think um, for a lot of our listeners who are listening to this and you know, have, have a fantastic idea for a Web3 project, would want to explore you know, um, how they can get into this uh, Web3 world. So if you could share some of your personal journey into this world, uh, mm -hmm. that would be great. Uh, so me personally, I joined uh, this um, uh, how's a crypto industry first of all uh, by quitting my my university oh wow okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's I, very I was pretty. in my I was in my uh, post uh, graduate degree and um, it was a year where I was doing negotiation degree and uh, it happens that um, I started to trade crypto a little bit mm -hmm. I wanted to know more about this technology I started to learn a lot of things on YouTube already but uh, still um, learning uh, at school with negotiation uh, it sounds it, it just sounds, you know, not that's interesting for me anymore because you cannot learn negotiation if you can't, if you do not participate use actually, in, in right. use it actually. So uh, by quitting, I say wow. my, my school, um, I started to focus more and more on Asian markets. First mm -hmm. of all. And I found this um, KuCoin mm -hmm. as one of the uh, global top uh, top five exchange at the moment, and uh, I wanted to see you know what are the opportunities are here. So I just you know sent sent my CV, and oh, wow, okay. that's how I got into crypto. It was back in uh, 2019. Oh right, yeah. okay. Um Right. I'm not quite sure how I should respond to that, whether I should say I recommend that everyone follow. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the thing is, uh, after joining, uh, actually, I, I spent my whole journey to in, in, in this industry with KuCoin. Mm -hmm. So I first joined as a uh, business developer. And oh, right. after okay. six months later, we did, um, we, uh, how say, I, I led uh, the KuCoin community chain test net. Mm -hmm. So this is where during a year we had a lot of explorations around uh, what are we doing? Doing in terms of uh, uh, tech architecture, mm -hmm. uh, who, how do we mount um, a developer community? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we, um, how to say, um, uh, engage nodes operators to mm -hmm. come to our ecosystem? So we tested a lot of things during a year. After that, we handed the, we handed that to the mainnet team, which today became uh, KuCoin Community Chain. And right. after that, only I uh, started to you know really look at um, you know this whole investment arm of KuCoin mm -hmm. with all with you know more decentralized experience uh, with the with the chain. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I had more feeling like um, projects and uh, developers. Actually, today they're not lacking money, but they're lacking good supporter. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. when they are building on, on any chain, actually, um, when they are seeking for investments, um, the value add of each and every investor is very important. Who is really supporting those uh, the, the projects? How to make them grow? How to uh, give in, give them a, a sus more sustainable model? Mm -hmm. uh, those are things that probably would be more helpful for them. So this is why. Um, 
uh, you know, after I take over, you know, KuCoin Labs, we did a rebranding and we mm -hmm. turned this more into a uh, research oriented investment and incubation oriented, right, especially right. this year as we had more time with the bear market right, right, to, to, to spend with each and every project, you know, really help them dive deeper into what right. they're doing, uh, ma you know, making company with them mm -hmm. for a month or two, you mm -hmm. know, at least to really understand, to help, to support them. Yeah. So Salsa, you have undertaken quite a different number of roles uh, with Within the organization, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So before we deep dive into the you know women in Web3, uh, if we take a step back and look at the overall sort of uh, research or survey that's done by KuCoin mm -hmm. about uh, Web3 in general, I believe mm -hmm. um, you poll about three more than three thousand uh, internet users, mm -hmm. right? And then um, out of the three thousand, I believe it was. More, more than two thirds are men and a third mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. women, right? Okay. And was there anything that's surprising? I think uh, reading the survey very quickly, um, it, it, it seems like, you know, um, most of the, the, the group that is um, most aware of Web3 mm -hmm. is in the 18 to the 40 year old yeah. uh, group. So that's not something that's surprising, I guess. I, I do think so. The, the thing is, um, we, we must say being crypto native mm. is something, first of all, you need to be internet native. Uh, this is how like a younger generation, probably those born in 80s, 90s, mm -hmm. or even you know, you know, in, in to, uh, 2000s, mm -hmm. uh, they are more aware and they are more keen at um, allowing those new technologies yeah. uh, to, to um, have a heavier impact in their daily lives. Mm -hmm. um, Especially, especially here, uh, we are seeing a lot of um, uh, very, very young developers. They, they started coding at uh, 15, and they started their first fundraising at 18 or things wow. like that. And they are already a millionaire at 20. <laughs> so uh, I, I'd say uh, crypto is a very, very young industry, very mm. active, um, but also still immature, uh, which is also, I guess, one of the reasons why it's um, very, um, it seems un unstable. Mm and still undefined for mm -hmm. uh, most of the mm -hmm. um, you know, traditional people. Yeah. Right, yeah. You, you have a terminology in the report called uh, Web3 Skeptics, the grouping, <laughs> I guess, of who are not yet, uh, from, yes, yes. who are not internet native, for, mm -hmm. for example, and def, or rather they are internet skeptics yes. to start with. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So uh, let's just uh, let's, uh, look at um, the deep dive into the women in the Web3 uh, world, mm -hmm. right? Um, my first question is, what is the driver behind this deep dive? The, the reason why I ask is that if I look around this room, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> They're only women. All, all of us are women. Yep. So there doesn't seem to be a compelling case to do this deep dive. It seems like there's a lot of women in Web3 who are very mm -hmm. enthusiastic. So yep. what's the, what the, you know, mm -hmm. the reason behind the, this deep dive? Mm -hmm. I think, first of all, it's, um, we wanted to do a comparison because, uh, as, as we just mentioned, the whole industry is very young and active mm. and it's really open-minded so um, normally um, as we would presume that you know women are gaining more and more um, how to say speaking power here mm. uh, and are building more things uh, and are perhaps having more uh, how to say equality uh, but the thing is my experience let's say uh, is that most of uh, the the founders um, even though there are more and more women uh, the, the founders, the, the core developers are still men and they are uh, also leading a lot of things. Uh, a, a, a man developer and a woman yes. uh, developer, they, they, they have the same skills, mm -hmm. say, saying they have the same skills, uh, same level of education, same experience, background, etc. But still, uh, it could be easier sometimes for the man developer to gain more, uh, how to say, attention. For example, in, in events like uh, this, yes. uh, Token 20, 2049, uh, to immersively, uh, you know, go to clubs with different um, right. uh, founders oh, or okay. uh, going, they, they are visiting each other's hotel rooms. Right. And oh. for, for, for <laughs> okay. women, it could be a little bit mm, uh, awkward. <laughs> awkward. It could be a little bit awkward. That's right. So I, I guess this is something uh, not only concerning, of course, the crypto industry, it's mm. something that concerning just women in its own condition mm -hmm. and how women are educated to mm -hmm. you know take care um, you know uh, thinking about our own security our own reputation okay just <laughs> this I, kind I, of things I, I, I understand <laughs> what you mean so this is what you refer to I think in the report you you meant or rather the report mentioned this uh, uh, terminology the bro culture mm -hmm. is that what you 
Exactly, like, exactly. Like, men have a lot of social activities that mm -hmm. uh, women sometimes that can participate, them. of course. Right. But it could be a little bit awkward depending on how how, how you want to be perceived. Yeah, right, exactly. In that yeah. kind of setting. Um, so you you touch you touch on you know the developers uh, sort of world, but um, there's also other skill sets that's valuable in Web3, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. marketing, yep. you know, strategy, right? So in those uh, areas, mm -hmm. um, let, let me take an example of cybersecurity because that's yep. uh, my background, cybersecurity. Oh, sure. So when we talk about, you know, women in cybersecurity, there's also a lot of attention about, you know, there's a lack of um, women in cybersecurity, but sometimes what we meant by that is that there's lack of um, women with technical skills in cybersecurity, mm. but there's no shortage of women in marketing, not, no shortage of PR ladies in <laughs> cybersecurity yep. at all. I guess somehow <laughs> it's, it's the same case because, um, like scienti scientifically speaking, women are more talented in terms of uh, expression. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, you know soft um, soft skills, soft skills, yeah, exactly. So um, I guess in 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 crypto uh, rather than in cybersecurity, it's the same. Where we see really really a lot of women doing uh, you know media, PR, uh, marketing, and who are presenting, who are being the, at the front line, being the, the face of mm -hmm. a lot of organizations. Uh, but on the back end, uh, let's say uh, technically speaking, mm -hmm. men are still uh, how to say, uh, not dominating. It's a, it's a too heavy word. Uh, but concentrated, they are, yeah. Yeah, in, they're in more that, concentrated in, in technical fields. Yeah, in the uh, technical side. Uh, not saying that women are not at all, uh, but they are less. And when there are women, mm -hmm. uh, like people are surprised, like like goodly good good mm. surprise, but still people get surprised when women mm. are good at you know technical things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So so are we you know also saying on the other hand that we need more men in marketing and yeah. <laughs> so um, we touch on very briefly about the different sort of age group generation you know um, adoption and perception when it comes to Web three. Also very briefly on women. Mm -hmm. I w I want to just gather your views very quickly about. Um, you know, your perceptions when you um, travel around and mm -hmm. uh, give uh, talks, right? What is your perception about the adoption rate of Web3 across different economies and countries? Mm. Oh, very interesting. Um, it depends. Actually, it comes back to the, co uh, the concepts uh, that we mentioned, like uh, in, the, in the first uh, question. It's uh, blockchain adoption, crypto adoption, and Web3 adoption. They are very different. Uh, I mean, in a lot of... Um, um, Southeast Asia countries, um, Turkey, um, South um, Latin America, let's say. Yeah. Um, actually, crypto adoption is the most permanent one. Uh, crypto adoption meaning speculation, meaning buying and selling yeah. tokens, meaning uh, participation with you know centralized or decentralized exchanges, participating in I don't know any airdrops um, uh, or external activities, etc. Those countries are uh, countries and regions are mostly uh, keen to crypto adoption. Whereas, mm -hmm. for example, in the United States, uh, in Europe or Korea, like East Asia, Korea, yeah. Japan, Japan. Uh, a little bit China. Um, I think people are more keen at blockchain and Web3 adoption, meaning uh, blockchain adoption, meaning they are using daily, um, for example, MetaMask, uh, mm -hmm. They are do, doing a lot of DeFi uh, protocols. They are doing uh, yield farming, maybe mm -hmm. like uh, years ago, and uh, they are probably you know having a lot of NFTs, um, mm -hmm. and they are participating at uh, development, uh, community building mm -hmm. uh, of very different you know um, how to say um, developing um, projects. Yeah. So this is. Uh, like blockchain uh, uh, adoption. And secondly, Web3 mm -hmm. adoption is about really using um, products like mm -hmm. applications around data, around, uh, uh, how to say, um, uh, aggregation, for example, of, right. uh, of, uh, of uh, applications, right, right. Uh, aggregation of uh, uh, DeFi's mm -hmm. uh, and all, all those stuff. So, um, and also, for example, for NFT uh, artists to yeah. participate uh, in a, in a, in, for example, whale DAO, etc. So, mm -hmm. creating their own things, they're participating by uh, really adopting uh, this new kind of organization, new kind of st structure. Mm. Um, 
so, so I, I guess those, those are different differences that I'm seeing. Uh, yeah, you, you use a lot of terms like DAO, DeFi. Uh, Very briefly, DeFi and DAO, if you could just... Yeah, uh, so, so DeFi, uh, meaning de decentralized finance, um, to simplify, uh, it's financial services and tools uh, that um, users can use with their, with their tokens. Uh, and uh, like on, on chain, on chain, yeah. on chain, yes. on chain, yeah, uh, and they're totally decentralized, and uh, people could see on chain, you know, every move that you're doing, like peer uh, with to peer lending, peer to peer lending, and right. uh, to do so, you will have to have your own wallet on chain. So, and, and DAO uh, is so decentralized autonomous organization, which is which is um, how to say. Coming from the, the the fundamental ideas of being decentralized um, in in this world, uh, so the way that people um, co collaborate with each other, right? Oh, that's um, a good word. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking of governance, but that's yeah, too, I think too it's, too a it's a collaboration. It's a collaboration. Saying uh, in the traditional uh, side, we uh, we can you know we are, we created hierarchies mm. uh, to to run the whole. Whole, whole traditional structure, mm. but in DAOs, rather than having hierarchies, we're having roles, uh, different roles. So this is where governance com comes mm. inside, the, that different roles, how do they um, operate mm. uh, like uh, between them? Mm. This is, I'd say, what we call governance. It's, it's probably something like a, an institution or, or, or uh, sorry, a how constitution. How we organize ourselves. Yeah, it's a, it's a constitution for, for a country. It's, right. uh, I don't know, internal rules for a company. For ecosystem. Um, yeah, for ecosystem. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. So governance would be the way that each and every roles in, in this um, collaboration uh, right. could, yeah. could work together. Right. Yeah. right, yes. So you talk about a lot of exciting things that's happening in mm -hmm. Web3, in crypto, in mm -hmm. blockchain, right? Yeah. So to wrap up, uh, what do you think that we need to do to progress to the next stage? Um, mm -hmm. We meaning, um, well, not just the developed economies, mm -hmm. but also the you know, uh, economies that's not so developed but heavily using crypto and perhaps they mm -hmm. need to go t more towards Web3. Yeah. What do you think that we need to do? And also for women as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So um, the thing is, a lot of people are sticked to the idea that, um, how'd say, w would say Web3 or like crypto uh, is uh, is not only a technology, mm. but it's more of a, it's like ideology. It's a, mm. um, how to say, it, it's an ideological movement allowed by technology, let's say. And this technology allowing people to having more and more equality, freedom and transparency, uh, making them, you know, participate in, you know, all those um, the, in the global economy and finance uh, with less and less permission, mm -hmm. uh, less and uh, lower and lower thresholds. Yeah. Uh, but still, the, the fact that um, everybody must understand the fundamental ideology is a threshold on itself, because uh, this actually, um, how to say, prevents people from uh, joining the the, mm. the, the the market, for example, for uh, Web3 skepticals, uh, the thing is, um, we didn't lower thresholds for them. We we asked them to to have to understand everything, the, the ideology, what is being mm -hmm. crypto native before mm -hmm. participating. And this is a lot actually. If if everybody must under, understand everything, how it works from right. the fundamental to its top, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot. So I think the next step. Um, really is to make this uh, mass adoption possible. Uh, we, for example, when we are doing interviews like this or when we are doing marketing, when we are doing um, any of you know, those um, soft skills that we are, we are, we're good at, we just need to uh, prepare ourselves to, to learn, keep learning. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we will be all lowering the threshold mm -hmm. together, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, this uh, interview that we are having, hopefully, is one way of educating <laughs> and bring awareness to uh, those skeptics who are in still you know, not, not so familiar with Web3. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lou. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you also.